A miraculous win of the Coastal Classic evens the Argos Conference record. Relive it and hear how it played out through Coach Shinnick's eyes. The hero joins us in studio, plus we check in with diving and volleyball. We preview this week's bout with Mississippi College, and you get your questions answered this week on the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. Welcome into week six. This is the Coach Shinnick Show, and so much to talk about this week. It was a wild game on Saturday, and you said to me, Coach, after the game on Saturday, hey, let's have some fun on the show this week. So let's. <laughs> sure, let's enjoy this. <laughs> what a wild game. Have you ever been a part of anything like that before? No, I really haven't. You know, we've had some game winners. We've had some last-second uh, field goals to win games, last-second touchdowns to win games, last-second stops. But nothing uh, have I gone through that, you know, can mirror the last three minutes of that game right there. <laughs> well, take us through the game. What did you like about it? Uh, and, and kind of what was your assessment of things through that one? Well, first off, I give our guys a lot of credit, number one, to be in that position. Um, you know, obviously Florida Tech did some things at the end of the game that gave us the ball. But if it's not a one-point game, none of that really matters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we came out, we matched them, kicked two field goals, got into the red zone, did that in the first half, down a point. They score a touchdown. We come back, match it. And then really, I, I mean, a great defensive game uh, from that point on. They were winning the field position battle. We were backed up. Every time it seemed like we got something going, uh, you know, we kind of hurt ourselves. Whether we had a drop or, you know, the last drive, we have two penalties mm -hmm. uh, and a drop in it as well. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. You're going to have to deal with the consequences. And really what the consequences were is we gave the ball back and now we had to rely on our defense. Defense found a way to get us the ball. Well, let's take a look back through it. It's the Coastal Classic. Last year in Pensacola, Melbourne, or uh, Florida Tech came in ranked. This year down in Melbourne, just outside of the rankings. And then after they scored, you guys were able to come back and, boy, it looked like uh, you guys had some receivers, including Robinson, that had some big games in this one. Well, no, we did. You know, Mike Mike did a great job right there getting the ball to Caleb. Um, you know, this is really just a couple of missed tackles. I mean, you know, that should have been a simple two-yard gain. Uh, we got that fixed later in the game. You know, they ran that a couple times. They didn't have that type of success. Um, and then going deep right here, uh, we saw Karan Ashley, the ability of him to jump. Now you see the ability of him to run. Uh, great day for him as a redshirt freshman. He just got ahead of his defender there, and Beaudry did a nice job to throw it up and let him go get it. Really did. Uh, Mike, Mike saw, saw that, read that well, and uh, excited to have that play. Obviously, that ignited us. Um, here we're back on defense, really just out of position, um, you know, one gap over. Um, their quarterback, Trent, I thought he did a, a really nice job running their offense. Um, this was fun to see. Chris Schwartz, 75 yards, starting to churn out a little bit in the run game. Uh, here's Austin in the first half. Um, you know, and uh, he, he, is, he has just been, you know, he, he was focused in all week in practice. Uh, you know, he, had a, he, had, he, he kicked extremely well before the, the game winner. Uh, but to see him do that was great. And then Chris Schwartz really scored on the play before uh, and uh, then just put it in definitively on that one. Well, it was good to see. That was a, that was a big touchdown of the game as well. And then Beaudry find Caleb Robinson here. Oh, yeah, no, this was great. Coach D said it was a second and ten call, and uh, I was like, hey, what are your suggestions? Jamie D said, let's run that combination. Worked out great. Uh, and then, you know, we ran into a little trouble. Gave up a sack. Mike gets hit. Um, and here's the play, really, that changed the game. Cato should be sliding. Uh, and he didn't. <laughs> Even their left tackle knows it. And then really, we get the intentional grounding, which I think is a good call. I know FIT doesn't, but if we hadn't gotten the intentional grounding, we should have got two holding penalties. Uh, you know, something that FIT was teaching their players to do. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that the rules committee addressed this year. Uh, last play of the game can't end in an offensive uh, penalty. And I'll, I'll tell you what, Austin Williams knocking it in. Uh, Felt he was good. I felt he was good before the penalty, to be honest with you. I, 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 I sit here today completely honest with you. I was not nervous. I, I felt like he was going to knock a 55-yarder to win the game. 
44 made it easier. <laughs> no doubt. So uh, as long as you guys were getting the ball back, he was going to be in there to kick that field goal regardless of the distance. Yeah, I, I felt like where the ball was, you know, and they helped us a tremendous – I mean, they got to delay a game penalty, uh, you know, which took five yards mm -hmm. away. Even if that hadn't have been there, it would have been longer. Uh, and here we are celebrating in the locker room. Might be the funnest moment, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I've had at post-game locker room. Two years in a row, the FIT celebration has been one, you know, just one to remember and one for the ages. It, it's been a blast. Well, we get to hang on to the Coastal Classic Trophy for another another year, which is always fun. Some great performances in this game. Mike Beaudry really played well. It seems like he just continues to grow up every week. And, and there were some incompletions in that game that I really felt weren't his fault. Oh, not at all. And, you know, you know, you look at Mike's stats, and he's, he's 12 for 30, you know, 199 yards. Really had five drops. If, those, if you don't have those drops, he's got about 280 yards passing. And then he did a great job on three or four occasions throwing the ball away. And, you know, we, we say, you know, that that's great football management on his part. Uh, so that was very, very good to see. You touched on Chris Schwartz, but he averaged, what, almost uh, five yards a carry. You'll take that out of your running backs. Most definitely. Chris is starting to get it, starting to churn it. Uh, we got to get him a couple more touches in there, uh, but really like what we're seeing out of him. And what you see running is really only half of what he does. Uh, he, he is as good of a pass-protecting running back that, that I've ever been around. He, he, he takes pride in it and does a fantastic job. He's a stout guy. I'm sure that helps a little <laughs> bit, too. Uh, Karan Ashley, kind of a shame that he doesn't end up getting freshman of the week honors. Yeah, I thought great, great, uh, you know, great game by him. Uh, five catches over 100 yards, the 76-yard touchdown. Really had another touchdown that, uh, you know, we had a holding penalty on. Uh, very pleased with how he's progressing and what he's able to do. Talk about your defense. Obviously, their guy's tough to stop offensively. He, he, he's tough to slow down, but it looked like you guys mixed in some packages that really gave him problems. Well, you know, he's going to get his yards. He's as good in space as there is in the Gulf South Conference. I mean, we, we, we faced two running backs uh, and one at Delta State in a couple of weeks that are, I, I think, as good as there is in the country. Uh, uh, you know, FIT's running back is as shifty and explosive as there is. You know, 31 carries, 170 yards, that sounds like a lot, but he's got the ability to break a 50-yarder almost every time he touches it. Austin Williams, you've got to be happy with what you've seen out of him, especially in a situation he goes out there to kick the game winner, and his normal holder's not out there. At what point did you realize Mike wasn't going to be able to go? Well, they, had, they were concerned about Mike on the sideline, and, you know, they were talking to him, and uh, I just told Twan, I said, go out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, talk to him, see what happens. Uh, you, you got Austin on later. Uh, it's a great story just, you know, when he found out that <laughs> Antoine Griffin was his holder and Mike Beaudry wasn't going to be out there. Oh, my gosh. Can't wait to hear that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, Coach Schenick returns in a moment, but some weekly accolades to get to. Plus, we check in with volleyball and diving. Coming up, this is the Coach Schenick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Being a champion takes more than skill more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. The Argo diving team got off to a strong start over the weekend, claiming wins over Emory and Birmingham Southern in a season opening invitational in Georgia. The Argos capped both ends of the duel with identical 32-11 scores over the weekend. Francesco Fazzola highlighted Sunday's results by breaking the school's freshman record 
with a score of 258.7 in the one meter. That happened the day after Justina Farrell set the school's freshman mark in the three meter Saturday. Junior Mariah Constantikos turned in a personal best 252.55, ranking her fourth all time in Argo history in the three meter. Carson Bronnenberg also set a personal record, posting a 224.95 score. Diving coach Barbara Parker is pleased with the early results and encouraged about the season ahead. We had a great weekend. I would say that that was one of the best trips that we've had. Uh, we were able to do some training. It does a lot for us. It gives the ladies a chance to get off some of their newer dives and to see how they are able to compete in comparison to some of the other Division II schools in the area. Switching gears to the hardwood, the Argo volleyball team keeps rolling along. Tuesday night, they won their 10th straight match with a 3 0 win over West Georgia, pushing the Argos to 5 0 in conference play. Jordan Poppin led the way with 13 kills and a 500 hitting percentage. The win was the Argos' third straight sweep and followed up a 3 0 win over Auburn Montgomery Saturday. Melissa Walter really likes the direction of the team. I think the biggest thing that I am liking about our team right now is that they are making an investment in every point. This is a group that really, um, they love training, they love working hard, they love competing. Now we return to the gridiron. We welcome in the guy whose job is responsible for the game being called football. Argos kicker and Saturday's hero Austin Williams joins us in the studio today. And Austin, welcome to the show. What What's that feeling like running out there and kicking a game winner like that? You know, Tommy, it was one of the greatest feelings that I've ever experienced. I mean, that thing just going right through the uprights, all I remember is just chucking my helmet in the air like 15 yards. It was amazing. When you ran up, did you know you had it? So earlier in the game, I noticed that when I was kicking, the ball had been veering right and then curl curling back left. So in that kick, as I was lined up, I was like, you know, I'm going to aim a little bit right, and then hopefully this thing will do what I plan it to do and curl back in, and that's exactly what happened. So The wind was in your face. Did that play a factor at all? Absolutely. Kicking in the wind is one of the most tough things to do. you got to approach the ball a little quicker. you got to make sure everything is right because if you're off just one bit, the ball can go into a this helicopter spin and it'll be horrible. Well, that was a weird ending to the game. Didn't know if you guys were going to get the ball back. If you did, field position, all that. And then you see their offense run back out on the field. So at what point did you realize, hey, I might be needed here at the end? Oh, that whole fourth quarter, I was, I was ready because – the game before, towards the end of that game, I wasn't ready. I thought we were just going to go for two or something like that. And then turns out I wasn't ready and I missed a field goal. So I made that, like, I made that something that I don't ever want to have to go through again. I want to be ready from then on out. Well, you were, and, and you went out and you nailed it. Uh, I, I can only imagine that's got to be the ultimate feeling. That's got to be the pinnacle for a kicker. <laughs> Like I said, man, it is amazing. All I remember is just chucking the helmet 15 <laughs> yards and then celebrating with the brothers for like, man, you didn't have, awesome. You didn't have your normal holder out there. Uh, we, we talked about it with Coach Schick. Mike, Mike Baudry wasn't around. So, so when you run out there, are, are you looking for him? Did you know at what point did you realize he wasn't going to be holding? So I'm locked in. Like, So I'm coming off the sideline. I'm like, all right, here we go. Usually Mike's right behind me. You know, I'm looking for him. But as I'm out there, I'm like, where's Mike, 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 you know? And then all of a sudden, Tuan comes up behind me. He's all, tap, tap, hey, you ready to do this thing? <laughs> I'm like, Whew. All right, Tuan, here we go. Straight up and down, Alina, a little to the right. And he was like, all right, towards me, right? And I was like, yeah, man, here we go. We're about to do this. And then everything went right, so. Is that nerve-wracking? I, I, not knowing who your holder is aside, is kicking a field goal in a situation like that, is that a nerve-wracking situation? It is for those of us watching so for you, it, is that, or, or is it a situation where you're so locked in, you're just more focused? I used to get nervous, but I've kind of looked back on how hard I've worked that now I, w I want success so bad that I don't get nervous at all when I go to kick field goals anymore. Even in that situation, I just, I wanted to make it so bad that there's just no room to be nervous. Not even with an a, a inexperienced holder? Not even with an ex <laughs> yeah, man. You were a quarterback in junior college, and you, and you were when you were younger as well. At what point did you transition exclusively into kicking? Well, I, uh, last year at my junior college, I had actually made a decision where I just wanted to kick because I just wanted to better myself and get better recruiting because I, I, I was a better kicker than I was a quarterback. But the quarterback situation wasn't all that great, and I ended up having to do both. 
in at, at my JC. So wow. Yeah. Well, it's worked out well for you. It's great to have you in Pensacola. Very exciting. Congratulations on the win on Saturday, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate it, Tommy. All right. Thanks so much. That is Austin Williams joining us. Plenty more to get to. Special teams keeps hogging all the GSC Weekly Awards. We're back to talk about that. Plus, we preview Mississippi College with Coach Shinnick next. As Division II student-athletes, we are committed to being our best. Division II National SEC is proud to partner with the Sports Science Institute to play a role in the cardiac safety and health of student-athletes. Although many student-athletes with heart conditions live healthy, active lives, up to 10 NCAA student-athletes die each year of sudden cardiac death during athletic activities. The facts are that immediate delivery of CPR and AED saves lives, so everyone should be CPR and AED trained. Please join us in this important initiative. Make it yours. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division II, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. Coach Shinnick returns in a moment, but some weekly accolades to hand out first. For the third straight week, the Argos had a player receive special teams player of the week honors. Austin Williams brought home the award for the second time after kicking three field goals Saturday, including the game winner from 44 yards out. He's eight for nine on this year's field goal attempts, including Saturday's clincher. That was his longest of the season. Well, last week was fun, but we're certainly out of the 24-hour window of enjoyment. So, on to Mississippi College now, Coach. We welcome you back in. Mississippi College, what do they do that could give you guys some problems this weekend? Well, you know, they're a team that's 0-5 right now, and I think everybody looks at that. But, um, you know, a couple things to keep in mind. It was 20-17 to versus Delta State in the third quarter. Uh, they're getting better every, you know, every game, we think. Uh, the Delta game, obviously, is a great in-state rival for them, so they play them extremely well. Uh, stingy on defense, mm -hmm. uh, and then offensively, got enough athletes to run around to create some issues. you got to have your fits right, got to have your eyes right. Yeah, it certainly seems like they've got some playmakers. Their running back seems to be a guy that can chew up some big yards. Yeah, you know, he, he did a great job against uh, FIT and the number of carries that they gave him. Uh, you know, we talked about freshman, you know, uh, player of the week. Their uh, kickoff returner got it last week. Uh, he's averaging about 25, 30 yards a kickoff return. So, uh, I mean, uh, it's a team that is scary enough that we've got to be playing at a high level. we got to be, at, you know, where we need to be in order to, you know, win the game. You talked about the Delta State game what have you seen on film in that game what did they do that kind of gave Delta State problems because I'm guessing you know you've got Delta State coming up again real soon and mm -hmm. not again but you have them sure. coming up soon uh, and, and they played them well so there's probably a lot of things you can look at from that tape 
But let's start with Mississippi College. What what was it that gave Delta State fits? And Delta State may be one of the best teams in the conference. Well, right now, Delta State is the highest ranked team in the conference. And I mean, they're playing at a very, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're playing very strong right now. Uh, Mississippi College really defensively uh, played Delta well. Uh, and again, Delta has one of the best running backs in the conference. Um, they, they created movement up front. They created, uh, you know, um, some confusion in the secondary and really gave them fits throughout the course of the day. Again, it's a close game. Delta's got a – Delta scores right before the half on a long play, uh, or it's a completely different game. Their receiver – Threw a touchdown pass. He was also their leading receiver in the game. So is that some trickery that they that they like to do? Or are they kind of a gimmicky offense? Or is that just pulling out all the, all the stops in a rivalry game? Well, I think they pulled out a lot of the stops in the rivalry game. They did, uh, you know, whatever they could to, you know, get as many points on the board as they possibly could. Their offense had struggled a little bit. But, uh, I again, I, I think they're playing well. We've watched them the last couple weeks because we've had similar opponents. They played FIT. We were able to watch that game. Um, and so uh, – I'm impressed with what I see, and I don't think their record reflects the type of team that they are. And they're certainly hungry for a win, too, which makes them dangerous. We'll talk more about it when we come back. Plus, when we come back, Coach Shinnick answers your questions, and we give you a chance to win some tickets. All that's still to come. This is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash to dive deep, to create, to develop, to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show, or that part of the show where you get to ask the questions. But first, I want to ask you about the health of the team. That was a really physical game mm -hmm. on Saturday, so is everybody in good shape? Yeah, we're moving along. You know, for uh, this early in the week, we feel good about where we are and uh, got some guys a little banged up, but that's just par for the course. It was a physical game. I think both sides of the ball, uh, you know, felt it. Uh, but when you play a rivalry game and you play, you know, that type of uh, environment and for that long and, you, you know, that was a full 60-minute 60, <laughs> 60 game right there. So every lick mattered. Nobody's taking any plays off in that one. Mike, Mike got a little banged up. He wasn't in there as we talked about the hold at the end. Is he okay for this week? Yeah, we're waiting to see. I mean, you know, there's a protocol that's got to go through with, uh, you know, where he's at. But all symptoms are looking good right now. All right, very good. Now let's get to your questions. We continue to get a lot of great uh, questions through social media and through GoArgos.com. And we start with Susan and Daphne. Amazing win on Saturday. I don't know how many times their coach mismanaged the clock, but I loved every one of them. <laughs> she goes, turning to this week, this game has trap written all over it after a big emotional win. And the fact that the Choctaws are winless, how do you hammer it home to the boys that they can't take this team lightly? Yeah, you know, we talked about that in our Monday meeting and, you know, said, hey, the last winless team we played was Valdosta State. You know, how did that work out for us? Uh, just to, to remind them, and I mean, it's a great question. Uh, I think where we are in trying to build the program and, you know, trying to establish who we are and what we're going to do, this is a, a game that we have to take the next step. We, we have to be able to move in the direction if we want to be in contention and be talked about as one of the better teams in the conference. All right, Kennedy in Maryland. 
Maryland is curious about the walk-on process for prospective students that may want to be part of the team. How does that work? Yeah, it's really a long process, um, but we we add walk-ons every year. Um, we we added a, a handful before the start of the season, uh, and then we do have a walk-on tryout at the beginning of each semester, where we'll have anywhere from uh, you know 15 to 30 uh, students try out uh, for the team. So uh, we're always evaluating, always looking to fill voids. All right, very good. Bradley in Pensacola wants to know who's the energy guy on this team. Who can you kind of bring in offensively that brings the energy of everybody up? You, you know, offensively, it's probably uh, Antoine Griffin. He, he's the guy who you know always seems to be a little hyped. He's the guy who always seems to uh, be getting after it. Uh, you know, Samuel Antoine, one of our offensive linemen. He's a guy that's always smiling. He's a guy that's always getting excited. So uh, you know, offensive guys tend to be a little more subdued than the defensive guys. Okay, so who's the big energy guy defensively? Well, defensively, I think Martez Wheeler and uh, you know Andre Decombe. I mean, both those guys always have life, always have energy to them. Uh, they're always talking. I, I think Martez is talking right now somewhere. I mean, that, <laughs> that's how much he just continues to go. He has a good time. Even in practice, he's out oh, there. Most definitely. Having a great time. All right, Nicholas and Zephyr Hills. What qualities does a great football player need to possess both physically and mentally? Well, I think mentally is a, you know it's a great question. I mean, you, you got to be disciplined, and you got to really want to play the game because uh, it's not hard. I mean, it, it's a, or it's not easy. It's it, it's a hard game. Uh, there's a lot that we ask of them. Physically, you know, each position is different. You're always looking for something, but uh, really, if you if, if you're big and can run fast, uh, we'll find a place for you. All right, very good. <laughs> be sure to follow the Argonauts on social media. Also, you can submit your questions for Coach Shinnick as well at GoArgos.com. But before we leave you we want to give you a chance to win some tickets for Saturday's game all you have to do is tell us who is the first official signee in Argo football history you know the answer to that don't you I do yeah all right all you have to do is send us the right answer email it to sports information at uwf.edu for a chance to win and uh, you've got a shot to win be the first one to answer correctly and get some tickets for Saturday's game against the Choctaws of Mississippi College should be a fun game this weekend at uh, Blue Wahoo Stadium. Now, we're excited to be at home again and looking forward to it. And again, uh, we were, uh, we're thrilled to death to be in the position we're at. Now we got to go out and play great against uh, Mississippi College. And certainly some tough games coming up as well. Want to pick up a win? I'm sure you want to get out of there and keep getting guys healthy as well. So a lot to look forward to this weekend, a lot to be keyed in on. And, of course, the game is at 6 o'clock. If you can't make it out to Blue Wahoo Stadium, you know where to listen. Choice 106.9 FM, WRNE 980 AM. And you can watch the game as well on Blab TV. Get the full schedule of all Argonaut athletics at GoArgos.com. We're out of time for today. Big thanks to head coach Pete Shinnick for joining us and our entire crew. I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the UWF Sports Network.